going to just jump straight into the demo. Um, so uh, I have these three deployments. They're all spun down right now. We just have one node. It's a T3 uh, large. And so if I go ahead and, you know, let's let's scale these up and, and see what happens. And so I have a, a couple auto scaling groups in AWS. And so if I want to scale this. What we're going to see is that it's going to schedule that pod. Um, no problem. So those three pods. Now let's do the same thing again, but let's do it with, and actually let's look at what these uh, deployments are. And so it's just a Nginx um, container. Uh, we're requesting on the medium size one, uh, 0.8 cores and two gigs of memory. So, if I scale that one up as well, what we're going to see is those are going to stay in a pending state. Now, most people would say, oh, well, that's not an issue. Let, uh, that's, that's a perfect solution for, uh, or a perfect problem for the cluster autoscaler. And you would be right. But that's where the problem lies, is we have to manually set up auto-scaling groups. We have to know the resource request ahead of time of the application that's going to be deployed into that instance group. And we have to make sure that our configuration of our infrastructure uh, is going to support that. Um, so with Ocean, we can abstract all of that away. So in this case, let's go ahead and let's uh, import this cluster into Ocean. So this is for COPS. If we look at the COPS documentation, all we have to do in addition to creating a bearer token is add a couple feature flags. And so spot inst hybrid, what this allows us to do, we put this label on our instance group and then we can actually both manage the infrastructure using auto scaling groups and Ocean. And so your cluster autoscaler or your autoscaling groups can almost act as a fallback mechanism, uh, but we can actually have Ocean handle all of that. So all we have to do is add a couple labels. And then the only other thing we have to do is we have to have an, a default instance group. So I actually created one called default. It's got a minimum maximum size of zero, but I'm just going to add that same label here for hybrid mode. So that way it can be managed by both AWS as well as uh, Ocean. And then I just need to add this label right here, default launch spec. So that's it. I run a COPS update cluster. And then I can do a rolling update. And I actually have a script. And then if we go over to the Ocean console, we can see that it actually created a cluster. We can see it's updating my group. It's spinning up new instances. And let's see. Now let's do this. While this is happening, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. Let's scale up this workload again. And let's scale it to 30 replicas. Now, if I go into Ocean and I watch the logs, what we should see let's see if the pods are pending yet. 
and might still be doing the cluster roll. Yep, okay, so the cluster roll is still going on. What I want to do is show you in an already running cluster what that looks like. So if we go back to those three optimization layers that we were talking about, uh, showing you a production cluster, this is uh, what we're going to see. So the first thing we're going to see is the lifecycle provisioning. Uh, we're going to, uh, assuming you don't have a bunch of reserved instances that you're paying for and not using, uh, we're going to orchestrate your workload pretty much predominantly on spot instances. And let's go ahead and pick a cluster. And so as you can see up here, this is an EKS cluster. Uh, we're running about 300 nodes here. Um, it would cost, if this was running on demand, uh, almost $120,000 uh, this so far this month. And it's actually cost only 43. So roughly a 63% savings. But that savings rate's misleading because we'll save you 30 or 40% before we ever orchestrate on-spot instances. The way we do that, Again, first, the bin packing algorithm. So if we click on nodes and look at the nodes running in this cluster, but what you're going to see is these almost uh, unbelievable um, utilization rates. And the ones you see above 100%, um, that's just where the uh, the requests were way more than the application actually needed, or they were right-sized after the fact. Uh, it's not actually using more resources that, that are there. But you'll see these percentages that are almost 100%. And if you see the light blue and the light green, uh, I believe it was, I don't know if it was Ned or, or who, who was asking me about um, basically that buffer, right? If we're running at 90, 95%. So this light blue and light green you see is actually that buffer on these existing nodes. Um, but again, every 10 seconds, Ocean is looking for these nodes that might be a little underutilized. And if we look at the logs and we find one of these times where we scale down an instance, you can actually look at the pod rescheduling simulations that happen. And so it's running these simulations on each on each node, uh, seeing if we respect pod disruption budgets, labels, taints, annotations, can we reduce the footprint of this cluster? And then it's making those decisions. The right sizing, we had talked about this. So if I pull a cluster that's not currently updating, we'll see what that looks like. And this is just a demo cluster. So these numbers are gonna be very small, um, but you'll get an idea. And so after seven days, you start getting these. And so the delta here, like this was early on when the cluster was running, the delta is your waste. This is how many resources you're saying you need versus how much the workloads are actually consuming. Um, and so again, this is on a deployment basis now, uh, but uh, that will very soon be on an individual pod basis. And then lastly, contain uh, cost analysis. So if you are using, regardless of if you're using multi-tenant clusters today, this is going to be very beneficial for you. But if you're at a company that's currently using multi-tenant clusters or you're considering it, uh, this is going to make your life much easier. And so what this is, this is our, our cost analysis strictly for Ocean. We can filter and group by namespaces and labels. We can add filters and condition sets, and then we can drill down. What many customers do is they'll assign each team their own namespace. We can look down to the dollar and cent cost on both compute and storage for every single deployment, the percentage of that namespace, and then that namespace's percentage of the overall cluster. We can export this on a regular basis, uh, Excel spreadsheet, CSV. Um, we can basically connect our SSO, create an audit account for, you know, FinOps team or um, basically support your cost showback needs in any way, shape or form. And then lastly, uh, the pricing model. Um, this is a, a negative cost product. Uh, we, we're a success-based company, which means we don't make a dollar. In, I mean, we don't make a dime until we've put a dollar back in your pocket. 
So the way that we charge is purely based on the money that we save you. And then at the end of the month, based on the amount we've saved you on compute, you just kick back a small percentage of that to us. Um, so this is not something that costs budget. It's something that frees up budget for your other needs.